In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a hypothesis test to see if we have increased our click-through rate by uh, changing a feature here. Um, so in this example, we're doing Google Ad Search Network that we're running a campaign on. Historically, we have a click-through rate of 1.91%. Recently, we enabled the ad to appear on Google Search Partners in addition to Google itself. And we think since this change um, that that has increased our click-through rate. So let's say we went into our Google Ads account and since this change three days ago, we have a click-through rate of 77 out of 3,054 impressions. Question we're looking to answer then is, is there sufficient evidence at the 5% level of significance to conclude that turning on the feature to allow your ad to be seen via Google search partners increased the click-through rate? So have we increased the click-through rate um, by turning on this feature with um, basically 95% confidence or only a 5% chance of error? Okay. So firstly, um, what we define as our P, um, that is the, um, <clears throat> the original percentage. That's the 1.91%. We always start with that and that becomes part of my, um, my null hypothesis. Whatever was my original percentage, that's what I call P. Some textbooks call that or some sites call that pi. I call it P. Um, they both mean the same thing. It's like your, your original percentage. Um, and then um, I go and get my um, P bar, which is my sample percentage, by going and defining what my X bar was. Uh, so that's the 77. So I had 77 clicks out of the 354. So out of 3,054, gives me a P bar of 77 out of 354, or a click-through rate of 2.52%. So that is higher. Is that higher enough to draw any conclusions? Uh, it has to be different enough to truly say, yes, there is a difference. Um, so let's have a look. And again, we're gonna test at the 5% level of significance. Okay, so now to define our null hypothesis. Uh, in the null, nothing has changed is basically what the null is. Um, so we're gonna say nothing's changed, we're still at the 1.91%. The alternative, in our case, we want it, where we believe and wanna prove that our click-through rate has increased. So this is what we call a right-tailed test, we want to be in this extreme right side because we believe that um, the rate is now higher than the original 1.91%. So that's our alternative hypothesis. Okay, keeping going. Next thing I need to go do is get my test statistic. Okay, um, and to do that, I'm going to first go get my standard deviation here. Uh, I'm just going to pause the video and drop in a formula for what this looks like. Beautiful. So this is the formula for the standard deviation for the sample proportion um, or for the, um, yeah, the standard deviation for the proportion. Um, and that is part of our Z test formula. Again, I'm just going to pause the video and write that one out as well. Beautiful. So my z-score formula, um, let's just zoom in so you can see it, is this p bar minus p all over this standard deviation, which is this guy here. So I'm going to go get this bottom piece first, and then I'll put it in to calculate my z-test. Okay, so let's just go do this and this. Beautiful. So, um, first of all, sorry, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. 
There we go. That's better. Okay. So first of all, I need to get the square root of uh, p times bracket 1 minus p, which is in b7, and divide that by n, which is my 3054. Close bracket, and that is that standard deviation. Perfect. Just going to comment it out and put that formula here. Beautiful. Okay. And so now I can go get my Z test by taking my P bar, the 2.52% minus P, which is the 1.9%, and divide. So take that minus that, divide by this piece, which is this guy here. Beautiful. And that gives me 2.4680. Wonderful. If you look in the description for this video as well, you will see where to get the link to this file after as well. Okay, so now I can use that to get my p-value formula. Um, and I'm going to use a norm, sorry, norm.s.dist to get my p-value. Put in the z-score and put cumulative equal to true or you can just type one if you want. Beautiful. And that gives me my p-value of, oh, sorry, I'm missing one thing. Forgive me, very important. Because this is a right-tailed test, um, I do a one minus there. So I'm just missing one thing in this. There we go. So if we look here, we are looking for the right tail, so we're going to do a 1 minus to get this upper area. Beautiful. So norm.s.dist1 minus that to get this p-value. Level of significance is 5%. So this is really good. Um, this means that um, our p-value is much smaller than 5%. I'm just going to pause the video and show you what that looks like on this graph then. Okay, so that puts our test result here um, of this 2.46 uh, way in this upper tail here. So we need to be in this upper 5% to be in what's called the rejection region or to mean that our actual result, this 2.52% is high enough above the 1.91 to conclude the rate has increased. And it is high enough. It's way up here. You can make this even actually smaller. Oop. Um, this guy here, this line could be moved even further over really. It's in the upper 0.68% uh, of the graph. That is way up there. Um, really unlikely that you could get a p-bar of 2.52% given that the true proportion is still 1.91%. Okay, so if we want to mark the p-bar, the 2.52% on the graph, you can see it here, it would be way up here, whereas the 1.91% is there. Um, you can also write this as 0 0.02, like that, if you prefer for the p-bar. Um, so yeah, it is very high. So decision will be to reject H0, since this guy's much smaller than the 5%. So anytime your p-value is smaller than your level of significance, reject H0. And your conclusion is that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that turning on the feature to allow your ad to also be seen via Google search partners increased the click-through rate. Okay, thanks for watching. That now concludes this example.